This is the first of four recordings for Chapter 12. Chapter 12 is going to talk about intangibles, so you need to be able to uh, describe the characteristics of them, identify the costs, explain how amortization works, what are the different types of intangibles, what we have to deal with with goodwill, um, impairments, uh, what happens with research and development, and uh, presentation of intangibles. All right, so characteristics. They lack physical existence, so they're uh, contractual rights or legal rights. They're not financial instruments, so they're not backed by cash of some type. Um, they're normally a long-term assets. The common ones we see are patents, copyrights, franchises, goodwill, trademarks. Um, how are they valued? Well, if you purchase them, you record them at the price you paid to purchase them. Uh, and you include in there any additional costs to make the transfer legal, so purchase price legal fees. However, if you develop them, um, they're generally expensed as you develop them. So there's no um, amount shown in the assets because research and development as they incurred are expensed. How do we amortize them? Well, you have to decide if they're limited life or unlimited life. So if they're limited life, amortization is going to be a systematic charge. Um, we're going to usually credit the asset account. You can use an accumulated amortization account if you'd like. We determine a useful life. Um, it should be cost less residual, so if you intend to sell it at the end, um, you may have a residual value, and um, they should be tested for impairment periodically. If it's an indefinite life, there's no amortization because we don't know when it will no longer have any value. Um, you do have to test it for impairment at least am uh, annually. So this is just a sort of overall chart of the different uh, rules for purchase internally cre created amortization and when it needs to be uh, tested for impairment. There's six categories of intangible assets, marketing related, customer related, artistic, uh, contract related, technology related, and goodwill. So marketing related, trademarks, trade names. Um, usually these are not amortized. They're considered to have indefinite life. Um, trademarks um, have a legal protection uh, for 10 years, but they can be renewed uh, and unlimited. That's why we don't amortize these. So you would capitalize acquisition costs and any kind of um, legal uh, fights that you have about it that you've won. Customer related, these would be customer lips, uh, backlogs, um, contractual and non-contractual customer relationships. So you would capitalize the acquisition and amortize them over the useful life. Um, if they're internally generated, there would be nothing. Here's an example where Green Market uh, buys a customer list for $6 million. Um, so the purchase, we just put it into customer list, the intangible account, and show cash. We're going to amortize it. We use straight line for three years. So it should be $2 million per year. And so you'll see every year of the um, three-year life the following entry. Artistic related, these are copyrights. So uh, plays, literary works, photos. Um, these are granted for the life of the creator plus 70 years. Um, so it's the cost of acquiring and defending. You amortize it over the useful life. Um, contract related, so these are franchising and licensing agreements. Um, they do have a limited life. Well, franchise can have a limited life. If it has a limited life, you amortize it over the life. It can also have an indefinite life, and you would just carry that at cost. You wouldn't amortize it. Technology related, usually this has a patent associated with it. So you can capitalize the cost of um, getting the patent. It's only after you have the item and you're ready to patent it, those costs go into it, or the cost of purchasing a patent. Patents, usually it's 20 years, but there's all kinds of um, exclusions in that for drugs. 
Um, any of the cost of developing the patent, the idea, um, R&D things are expense, they're not capitalized. And we would amortize it over the legal or useful life. So here is a company and they're incurring legal costs associated with a patent and because they won, they get to capitalize those legal costs. So they may not have had anything in the patent account before because they're there was it was generated internally so because they defended the legal costs they do have a value now and they will amortize that over the patent useful life in this case 20 years so we'll amortize nine thousand dollars per year okay goodwill is usually the biggest intangible you see um, it conceptually represents future economic benefits so the way you you can only get it by purchasing a company. Inter internally developed goodwill is never recorded. Um, so goodwill happens when the amount you pay for another company is more than the fair market value of the net assets. So you're paying something above and beyond the value of the individual assets and liabilities. So how you record it, um, this is a company they're going to buy um, a parts uh, distributing company. So um, first step they're going to do is find out the fair value or the net, uh, the fair value of the net assets, and then they're going to receive an offer. So they're offering four hundred thousand dollars to buy these assets that are worth three hundred and fifty thousand. So there would be goodwill because they're paying us fifty thousand dollars more than the fair value of the identifiable assets. So when we record this, you will, it is a merger, you will record all of the assets and liabilities individually at fair value, and you will need to include goodwill in order to have it balance. Um, here's another example. Global Corporation is purchasing local company for 300,000. The balance sheet of local company, so cost, we're saying it's 155 fair market value is 225 and um, the net fair market value of the net assets will be 200 so the 225 minus 25 so if we're paying 300 for it there should be goodwill so the change from book value to fair value is referred to as the revaluation and then the difference between the fair value and the purchase price is the goodwill um, so this is just showing you the calculation of goodwill. So they come up with the fair value of the identifiable net assets, compare it to the purchase price to get the goodwill. Um, so here is the case. This is the journal entry that Global would record when they acquire the local company's assets. So again, these are all at fair market value. Um, goodwill is considered to have an indefinite life, so you don't amortize it, but you do have to test it for impairment at least annually. Um, and a bargain purchase, this is like negative goodwill. So when we pay less than the fair value of the uh, identifiable net assets, we have a bargain purchase. Now, what's weird is we don't carry it on the books as a liability or... Um, and negative goodwill. We run it through the income statement as a gain. So here's an example where they've purchased a company for seven hundred thousand. The fair value of the uh, identifiable net assets is six hundred thousand. So seven hundred thousand minus six hundred thousand gives us goodwill of one hundred thousand.